Hello friends, I am the Anti-Terrorist. Thank you for all of your emails and your messages of support and for staying in part of the conversation. Now I'm sure you'll all agree that 2008 promises to be a fascinating year. It's already had a very interesting start, what with all of the voter fraud and corruption that is permeating the political environment right now. Now the information I'm about to present in this broadcast will not sit well with some Americans who do not know the truth of the matter, but I hope you'll investigate everything I say find it to be fact, and then use it to empower you to make an informed decision when you're casting your vote, or when you decide to take part in any action that we take collectively. Now obviously, because of time constraints, I'm only able to paint in very broad brushstrokes. I hope that you will do some research and fill in the gaps for yourself. The people in the United States are basically misinformed, and that is, they have believed for 200 years or so that they have a sovereignty when in fact they don't. The United States is still a British colony and has been from the very inception. The quote unquote founding fathers were members of the crown. They were attorneys. For instance, the Declaration of Independence was signed by the crown and the attorneys for the crown. And so in reality, the conquest of the native people by a bankrupt corporation and the treaties that were signed have absolutely no validity. We had a group of people that were invariably called trading companies, and in particular the East India Trading Company that was based out of England, that sought to basically subrogate the whole world, and they have not stopped. They continue to do so. Back in the past centuries, the East India Trading Company was the organization, the corporation that funded the colonization of what we call the 13 original colonies or states. They are the ones that created the initial debt. Now the people from Europe who occupied Northern America have always done so under bankruptcy. And this was understood. What they try to do to avoid the bankruptcy is they try to incorporate and shift the liability from the private side into the public. And they did that in the US by incorporating under the Articles of Confederation. And in the Articles of Confederation, the corporation took on the debt or the liability that was owed to the East India Trading Company and consequently the king. Now they found that their incorporation was flawed because they had no way to enforce international treaties. In other words, they had not successfully incorporated the principles of international law under Admiralty into their Articles of Confederation. So at that point they formed a new corporation and had a new document created which was called the Constitution for the United States. Now the Constitution for the United States basically took over and assumed the liability that had been assumed by the previous corporation under the Articles of Confederation, which assumed the debt of the colonies which owed to the East India Trading Company and therefore the King of England. So the Constitution, which everyone is so busy worrying about, was a filing for bankruptcy and that occurred in 1789. Now, under the Anglo rules of bankruptcy, a nation can go into bankruptcy for a period of 70 years. Now the question for the first period of bankruptcy is, or was, what should be the surety? What can we use to guarantee the payment because the debt was owed to basically King George and the East India Trading Company and the Bank of England? And it was determined that they would use the land. The land was leaned. So that first bankruptcy lasted for 70 years. Then in 1859, which would have been the termination of the national bankruptcy, had the debt been repaid. But the debt was not repaid. In fact, the debt was increased. And as a consequence, a second bankruptcy was contemplated. But because all the land in the north was all leaned up, there was no way to use it for a surety again. They had to find a new surety. So the federal government in Washington, D.C. decided to go out by conquest and seize all the freehold land they could get their hands on. And the consequence of that... In 1860, they concocted the Civil War, or the war between the states, when in fact the states were not at war with each other. It was a federal government that was at war with the people. So the freehold land of the South was used as a surety for the second period of bankruptcy. Now they did not pay, and they had no intention of paying off the debt, because they wanted to continue on in bankruptcy. Now approximately in 1871, there was a new corporation that was formed, and it was called United States. And this new corporation 
went into Washington, D.C. and combined the five jurisdictions into one. And so from that they started the new corporation and assumed the debt from the previous corporations. By 1903, it was obvious to the European bankers that the new corporation, United States, could not and would not pay the debt. So by 1913, they came out with the Federal Reserve Act. Now the purpose of the 1913 Federal Reserve Act was to deal with that bankruptcy. Now in 1929, the European bankers forced a stock market crash and created an artificial depression in the United States. They went into a further period of bankruptcy. And the surety for that particular period of bankruptcy was the American people. The movable dirt. Movable dirt. So you have to understand that all the nations, all the civilized nations in the world went bankrupt in this period. You know, what the bankers were trying to do was to standardize commerce across the planet. Standard uniform commercial code. They were trying to get everyone into bankruptcy to have a general standard and a conformity across the planet to deal with currency and to deal with uh, the nature of commerce. Effectively, all governments are just the front for the bankers. All governments are corporations. There is a principle in the Old Testament that was adhered to by the Anglo people, which was the principle of slavery. Slavery is this. If you cannot pay your debt, you can go into slavery and basically work it off. And I do not confuse slavery with involuntary servitude. The African people in North America were not there under slavery. They were there under involuntary servitude and peony, because you have to go into slavery voluntarily. It's not by conquest. And so the people in the 50 states of the United States went into slavery by their permission. Now, it is true, they did so in ignorance. However, after the 70 years of slavery, the debt was paid. So if you add 70 onto 1929, you come up to 1999, specifically around November the 6th when the slavery and the bankruptcy was over. Now, if you cast your mind back to 1999, you remember the media was saturated with the goings-on of Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky and what the meaning of the word is, is. And all the while in the background, Congress was deciding what to do about this termination of the bankruptcy. And of course, they realized that there was a lot of benefit to staying in bankruptcy and staying with the fiat currency and staying out of substance within commerce. And so eventually what happened was they decided to stay in. But effectively the debt had been paid by your sweat equity, by your labor. Now what does this mean to you or the people there? It means you can no longer be held as surety for the original debt that had been incurred with the East India Trading Company. But they realized how much control they had over the currency, and the bankers obviously didn't want that bankruptcy and that control to come to an end. And so the United States then left America and went to Puerto Rico. And so we have a new corporation right now. I'm sure you know what the name of that corporation is. They're called Homeland Security. Now, Homeland Security is just another corporation created to deal with another 70 years of enforced faux bankruptcy. Essentially, you won't hear much about the United States from now on. You'll always hear the words Homeland Security because that is the new corporation. Now, remember, the corporation is created as a fiction it's created for the benefit of the real entity. But when the corporation stops acting for the benefit of its creator and starts to attack its creator, it has to be eliminated. The American government, the corporation that is Homeland Security, no longer is working for the people. They are working within commerce to standardize commerce across the planet and to control the people and your sweat equity. It is time you realize this and stepped out of the corporation, realized that you are no longer a surety for any debt to take a stand for yourself and to take some action. When Hillary Clinton is levered into the White House in November of this year, standing by the side of the road, shaking your fists and shouting, boo, is not going to cut it. We need to start civil disobedience, intensive, nonviolent civil disobedience. This needs to be organized. We need to start communicating with each other and organizing this event before they shut the internet down. There are cables being cut. The internet is slowly being subrogated. We need to communicate and organize an event. And we need to let them know we will no longer take it anymore. That goes for the people of the United Kingdom Corporation too. The government that is the United Kingdom Corporation. We no longer talk about Great Britain. 
We no longer talk about England. Whenever Brown is making a speech, he refers to United Kingdom. And if you don't already know, people of England, Great Britain will no longer exist very shortly. We are being subrogated by the corporation that is the European Union. This is all about corporate takeover. It's all about subrogating the power of the people in favor of corporations, in favor of money, in favor of commerce. The time for talking is over. We need to take some action. And I'm urging you, forget about the future for now. Forget about 2012. Forget about the end of the world. Forget about all those things. And start thinking about what you can do right now. What action you can take right now that can make a difference right now. Thanks for listening.